Welcome to EM Cases Rapid Reviews, where we review the take-home points from the EM Cases main episode podcasts so you can ace your exams and take stellar care of your patients. It's Dr. Eileen Chung again, and this is part two of the rapid review of EM Cases episode 84 on congenital heart disease emergencies. In part one, we talked about the practical three-step approach to assessing patients with suspected congenital heart disease. In this video, we'll focus on the investigations in the ER that can give you even more information to help you clinch your diagnosis. We'll also go into how to manage each type of cardiac lesion based on all the information you've gathered from the three-step approach and the investigations done. Let's get to it. Remember the theme of threes we had going in part one? We're going to continue that here. And the three investigations that may help you in diagnosing and managing your patients are number one, the EKG, number two, the chest x-ray, and number three, some specific lab tests. First, let's talk about the EKG. Let's keep this simple and talk about normal findings you would expect to see and some abnormal findings that you may see if your patient has congenital heart disease. We all start out life as right heart dominant and then gradually over the first month of life become left heart dominant. So it's totally normal to see right axis deviation on your EKG in the first month of life. What's abnormal is to see right ventricular hypertrophy. The timing's a little tricky in terms of when those right dominant forces would be considered normal versus abnormal, but a good rule of thumb is to have some suspicion that it's abnormal at one week of life and consider it to be definitely abnormal past one month of life. On the other hand, left ventricular hypertrophy should be considered abnormal at any age. Next, let's talk about the chest x-ray, and here we'll run into three things to look at on a chest x-ray for a baby with suspected congenital heart disease. The first is heart size. As with an adult, a normal heart size is 50% or less of the width of the thorax on a PA view of the chest. Cardiomegaly on the chest x-ray may mean that there's a shunting lesion. The second thing to look at is the pulmonary vasculature. In other words, do the lung fields look too dark or too white? Dark lung fields should make you think about a right obstructive lesion, while a whiteout on the chest x-ray is consistent with heart failure, either from a shunting lesion or from a left obstructive lesion. The third and final thing to look at on the chest x-ray is the aortic arch. Which side is it on? In lesions like Tetralogy of Fallot and some truncus malformations, the aortic arch is abnormally positioned on the right. So our EKG and our chest x-ray are done. Hopefully by now you've gotten IV access for this kiddo and the nurse is asking you what labs you want drawn. The most important thing to check is the glucose. In fact, don't wait for the labs to come back. Do an Accu check. This is so important because it's a readily reversible cause for why your patient looks so sick. Next, do a septic workup. Remember that your first instinct when you saw this baby was that he or she's septic. Don't ignore that. Do the septic workup guided by the baby's age and symptoms. FEBG and lactate may give you some helpful information on how the baby's oxygenating, ventilating, and perfusing. You should also consider a metabolic workup. And if you have a baby who's been exposed to drugs that cause methemoglobinemia based on the history, get a methemoglobin level. Now, how do we put all of this together to manage our patient? Well, first things first, even though this is a talk on congenital heart disease emergencies, your first actions have nothing to do with prostaglandins. If you haven't already, the first most critical thing to do is call for help. Get on the phone with a consultant. Then start empiric antibiotics. You don't know for sure that this baby's not septic. Get those antibiotics in early. Now we can consider the three interventions that might be specifically helpful in a patient presenting with suspected congenital heart disease. This being a review on congenital heart disease, a helpful mnemonic for those three interventions might be PFO. Except here, it doesn't stand for patent foramen ovale. Here, PFO stands for prostaglandin, fluids, and oxygen. We'll break down the different scenarios in which each of these may or may not be appropriate. Remember this slide? You're going to see that this three-step approach was not only useful for us to diagnose congenital heart disease, but also will help guide us on management. Except, since we've also talked about how investigations can give us more information in this video, let's add it as a fourth step. Now to put all four steps together, let's move on to look again at pink, blue, and gray babies. First up is the pink baby. Remember from part one that in the context of heart disease, this baby has heart failure. 
This baby is going to be presenting between 1 and 6 months old if the heart failure is from a congenital cause, like a shunting lesion. Abnormal findings would be the same as those you'd find in an adult with heart failure. Crackles to the chest, hepatomegaly, and pulmonary congestion on the chest x-ray. When we look at management, this is a 1 to 6 month old, so this is not a ductal dependent lesion and prostaglandin is not going to be useful, regardless of the etiology of the heart failure in a pink baby. What about fluids? Definitely not. In fact, as with an adult, what this baby needs is furosemide. The dose is 1 mg per kilo IV. What about oxygen? It's not contraindicated, but be judicious. Remember that oxygen can dilate the pulmonary vasculature, increasing pulmonary blood flow, and make the patient worse. If the baby has low SATs, you can put on some nasal prongs, but titrate the oxygen down or stop it altogether if the baby starts looking worse. The inotrope milrinone may also be helpful here, but you might not have access to it. So now what if you have a blue baby? We said that this could either be from a right-sided obstructive lesion or a shunting lesion. Well, how do you know which one it is? We'll be going into a deeper dive in the next few slides, but if it becomes too complicated and you remember nothing else, just remember that the age of your blue baby will be key to figuring that out. The blue baby that presents with a right obstructive cardiac lesion will be showing up in your department at less than one month old. The baby will have low O2 sats and will fail the hyperoxia test. The chest x-ray will show dark lung fields from lack of pulmonary blood flow. And the EKG may show signs of RVH. So since this baby is less than a month old, he or she likely has a ductal dependent lesion. So yes to prostaglandins. If you're starting prostaglandin, you need to remember that the side effects are hypotension and apnea. Have airway equipment at the bedside and be ready to intubate and ventilate this baby. Because the baby has too little pulmonary blood flow, we're going to help the baby compensate and increase that blood flow by giving fluids, given at judicious, smaller boluses of 10 mils per kilo with frequent reassessment. And in this case, we want to cause vasodilation of the pulmonary vasculature, so we're going to give oxygen. Let's compare that with the blue baby who's presenting with a shunting lesion. Similar to the previous baby, this baby is also going to have low O2 sats and fail the hyperoxia test. But that's where the similarities end. In contrast to the previous kid, this baby is going to present between 1 and 6 months old. Because of the type of shunting lesion that causes a blue baby, this kid's going to have a mix of cyanosis and heart failure. So you'll find hepatomegaly and pulmonary congestion on the x-ray. So management. Prostaglandin. Because of the age, this is not a ductal dependent lesion, so no thanks. Fluids? Well, we said this kid's in heart failure, so the management of this baby is actually starting to look a lot like the pink baby with heart failure. So no fluids, yes to furosemide. Yes to oxygen if the sats are really low, like below 85%, but again, be cautious. Milronone may also be helpful here if you have access to it. And finally, getting to our gray baby with a left-sided obstructive lesion and circulatory collapse. This kid is going to present at less than a month old. You'll find an O2 sat differential of greater than 3% between his preductal and postductal limbs. You're going to find abnormalities from the cardiovascular exam we talked about, like absent femoral pulses, a brachial femoral delay, or blood pressure differential between the upper and lower extremities. Because of the left obstructive lesion, this baby will also likely have pulmonary congestion on the x-ray. You could see RVH or LVH on the EKG, depending on when they present. So management of these patients. From the age, we think this is going to be a ductal dependent lesion. That's a yes to prostaglandin. This baby's in shock, so yes to fluids and smaller boluses. Oxygen. Again, try it in those who have really low SATs, but be cautious. Finally, because these babies are in circulatory collapse, they may need not only an inotrope like milrinone, but also a vasopressor like epinephrine to temporize things on their way out to a tertiary care center. The three take-home messages from this video are, number one, to consider the three investigations that may give you more information in the ER, which are the EKG, chest x-ray, and specific labs. Remember that the three-step approach will not only help you with diagnosis with the type of cardiac lesion your patient may have, but will also then guide management of these patients. And PFO, prostaglandin, fluids, and oxygen, as your three interventions to consider in all patients with critical congenital heart disease.